Hi, I'm Steve at Boston Children's Museum. Every year, Boston Children's Museum hosts musicians from New England Philharmonic, a local orchestra, uh, to do a concert series at the museum. This year, they've kindly made a series of videos so you can learn about the different instruments that make up an orchestra and how they work together to make music. New England Philharmonic is a wonderful organization and you can learn more about them and get involved by clicking on the link in the description. This is the second video in their series where we meet the String family. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the String Instrument family. If you heard Danny's introduction to the orchestra, then you know that all of the instruments in our family are made of wood, mostly from spruce trees and maple trees. Most importantly, our instruments all have strings, which is the special way our instruments make their sound. We use our bows and sometimes our fingers to make the strings vibrate, wiggle back and forth really fast, like that. And then the wooden body of our instrument also vibrates and amplifies the sound, makes it louder so everyone can hear it. This is the violin. It's the smallest and highest sounding instrument in the string family. And here's how it sounds. was a little bit of the third violin concerto composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. My name is Brianna Creamer, and I'm here to show you a little bit about the viola today, which is the second highest instrument in the string family. The viola is played up on your shoulder, just like the violin is. But as you can see here, it is a lot bigger than the violin is. And because it's bigger, it's going to make a deeper, lower sound than the violin does. The viola the other special thing about it is it has the same strings as the cello, and those strings are A, D, G, and C. And that's what it sounds like if I use pizzicato or I pluck with my finger. If I play those same four strings with my bow, it sounds like this. hear how much lower and deeper the sound is than the violin. So I'm going to play two pieces of music for you that show you the different ways that you can play the viola. The first piece that I'm going to do for you is by Strauss and it's called the pizzicato polka. So like the name says, I'm only going to pluck the strings with my finger in order to play this piece.
little bit of Strauss's pizzicato polka. The next piece I'm going to play for you that shows you what the viola sounds like, I'm going to use my bow for, and that's called playing Arco. And this piece is really a piece that's written for the cello. It's Johann Sebastian Bach's third cello suite in C major, and it's the first movement or the first part of the piece, which is called the prelude. And because the viola shares the same strings with the cello, I can play this piece too, even though it was written for the cello and not the viola. And it sounds like this. So that is a little bit of what it sounds like to hear a viola. You heard the pizzicato polka where I plucked the strings and you heard Johann Sebastian Bach's third cello suite where I used my bow. So remember the viola is right in between the violin and the cello, plays on the shoulder just like the violin does, but it has the same strings as the cello. I hope you enjoyed and up next is the cello. Hi there, my name is Jason and I would like to introduce you to the cello. The cello is a large string instrument. It is bigger than the violin and the viola but not as big as the double bass. Because it is a large instrument, it can make sounds that are lower than the viola and violin can make. The strings of the cello are the A, the D, the G, and the C. You may remember that the viola has the same strings. The reason these strings sound lower than the viola strings is because they are longer in length. You may also remember that the violinists and violists use a chin rest to hold their instrument. This is not the case for cellists. <laughs> you see, this is not very comfortable. To hold the cello in place, cellists rest it between the knees, just like this. We also use what is called an in-pin to adjust the length, the height of the instrument, like this. Um, this isn't going to work. This is far too low. Let's try that again. Okay. Uh-oh, this isn't going to work either. <laughs> this is far too high. Third time's the charm. Oh, that is so much better. The cello can play notes that are high, like the violin, and notes that are very low. Now I would like to play a piece for you that shows off the middle range of the instrument. This piece is called Minuet Number no. 1 by Johann Sebastian Bach.
and I played the double bass, which is both the biggest and the lowest instrument in the string family. Now, I love playing the double bass because it can make so many sounds. And my favorite sound to make of all of them is the low growl. I also like playing up high and making a nice mellow tone. I also like to play nice and quiet. And robust and loud. And I like playing smooth. And short and spiky. Most of all, I love putting all of these different sounds into combinations when I play music on the double bass. Thank you so much for learning about the double bass with me, and I hope you have a wonderful day.